What is up you guys, we are back with yet another awesome film. Today's movie starts with a documentary being done on Jillian. Jillian is a single mom who's the head of one of the biggest international space stations in the world. And this was why the documentary was being done, but it's gonna have to wait as Jillian gets called for an emergency meeting back at the space station. On the ISS, the International Space Station, an incredibly bizarre thing happens as an unexpected solar flare hits the International Space Station, killing one of the astronauts. This anomaly, this solar flare, is not really something that they forecasted. They saw nothing on their radar, and later they come to find out that this thing is not actually a solar flare at all, and it's also not the first time they encountered it. When they actually did see it for the first time, it was 1990 and it was visible for about two months. But before they could study it, it vanished into nothingness. Now that it's reappeared decades later, the people at the space station gave it a name and called it The Void. From initial studies, they thought it was some kind of supernova that could explode, but from its proximity to Earth and how stable it is, the idea that it's potentially a supernova is highly unlikely. Alex, a colleague of Jillian's, also explains how they detected a radio wave of 1420 megahertz. A physicist by the name of Jacob explains how this 1420 megahertz is something that's almost untraceable and something that we as humans are not really able to understand yet. When it first appeared, the scientists that recorded it tried to understand it and they did the best they could, but there wasn't really much that came of it. And now there's a pressing time issue, as they want to study this void, as they call it, before it disappears again. And the other questions that these scientists have on their minds is, is this thing intelligent? Is it trying to communicate with us? Are we doing what we're supposed to be doing? And a bunch of other profound questions that didn't really matter because of the time constraint. In order to simultaneously assess this void while also getting some of the answers that they seek, Jillian and some of the astronauts back at the space station decide to send a probe inside the void. They fit the probe with a bunch of HD cameras so that it picks up what's inside this void, but since there was a lot of cosmic energy surrounding the void, the probe gets destroyed almost immediately. But before it got destroyed from all the images and scans that they got, Jillian and the rest of the team now understand that this void is actually a wormhole to another place. People like Jacob question this wormhole theory as he doesn't believe that there's going to be an exit. In his hypothesis, if there's one entry point that he calls the throat, there needs to be another exit point where an object that can potentially enter must exit. After further examination of the footages, Jillian and the rest of the crew also find a very obscure image that looks like a planet through the other end of this so-called wormhole. They then discuss the possibility of sending a manned spacecraft through this wormhole, but people like Jacob object to this idea, saying that any human being sent through a wormhole is gonna die immediately. But contemplating the ifs would have to wait, as giant shapeless black clouds start forming all over the world, and the public starts to panic. Once these shapeless dark structures enter the atmosphere, they form an orb, and they start to get closer and closer to the planet minute by minute. Now with the clock ticking and not knowing what's gonna happen in the end, Jillian and the team contact the military and the military direct them to a secret program that they didn't really want revealed. And this program, of course, had something to do with human genome alteration and robotics. It was a way of combining human abilities with robots in order to make super soldiers that do the government's bidding. But this time, the plan is to make a cyborg. It's to combine a human brain with a robot and send it through the wormhole so that the human body survives the jump. Or I should say the human brain survives the jump because they're going to transplant a human brain inside a robot. The likelihood of this project working is not really known yet, but since Jillian was running out of options, they start interviewing a lot of people who are potential candidates to go on this kamikaze mission. Amongst the interviewees, the one that made the list was Carl Roberts. He used to be a recon drone pilot, but after an accident left him paralyzed, he's pretty much useless now. He wants to go through the procedure for various types of reasons, and since he was the most motivated, Alex and Jillian picked him. The doctors explain to Carl what the procedure entails. They are basically going to take out his brain, and then attach it to various synthetic nerve endings on the robot, that way he gets to have a completely functional robot body. But if you guys didn't figure this out yet, once somebody takes out your brain from your body, 
there is no going back. He's going to be a cyborg forever, and he will never have a normal life again. But none of this mattered after the procedure, which took about 72 hours, as the operation failed and Carl died. The scientists didn't take some things into consideration, and they didn't consider how his brain could potentially reject the host, which it did. So as soon as they were trying to integrate Carl's brain inside the cyborg, his brain rejected his new body. But Carl's death wasn't in vain, as the scientists have now learned how to actually integrate the brain successfully inside a cyborg. But, it needed to be certain people with certain genetic makeup, otherwise, the same problem would occur again. So after testing hundreds and thousands of people, they found three people that were an identical match to the cyborgs. Among the three, two of them were kind of qualified, but Jessica was the best option. Even though she may appear to be volatile at times, since her knowledge of cosmology and science is impeccable, Jillian and the team know that if she makes first contact with aliens, she can represent the human race very well. Jessica was very skeptical about this project because she could potentially die and she would never live a normal life ever again. But in the end, she decides to do the right thing and she goes through with the procedure. After the procedure, the operation was a success and everyone's hope of going forward with the plan and contacting this alien race is now more alive than ever. After the brain transplant, Jessica takes some time to adjust to her new body, and as soon as she does, she gets sent to travel through the wormhole. Everyone is excited to see what happens, and they're also curious to see if Jessica's new body will survive the wormhole. Up until she made it inside the wormhole, communications were still up, but after she made it through, there was no means of communication, and this was to be expected, and after Jessica and her ship disappeared, all that's left for the rest of humanity to do is wait. Jillian and the rest of the team believe that this process could take maybe decades or even centuries for her to come back, because they're really walking on uncharted territory, and mankind has never really experienced wormhole travel before. But to their surprise, Jessica's ship comes back after a few days. Inside, there was another robot ship that traveled with her, but now that robot is no longer there. And the other weird thing is, even though the robot's not there, Jessica is inside the ship and she's unconscious. They try to stabilize her, seeing that she may be traumatized from the experience that she had back there, and when they look at her memory circuits, they notice how she recorded years of information, even though she was gone for merely a few days. At this point, these black orbs that are on the air are getting a lot bigger, and every country's military is in code red, ready to attack the orbs. Why it was so important to send Jessica, and why it was so time sensitive, was because the wormhole emitted invisible waves, and from these waves, everybody at the space station knew what was coming. And what was coming was a very big solar storm. And not just any kind of solar storm, a solar storm that would carry giant pieces of debris with it that could potentially destroy planet Earth. Okay, as we move back to Jessica, the scientists try to recover every bit of information in her memory circuit, but since this was very tasking for her brain, they had to wait a while until they did it again. They got a few bits and pieces, but nothing that really makes sense. And soon, Jessica herself wakes up and she tells them the story of what she experienced. As she was going through the wormhole, the soldier that was with her somehow exits the pod and she sees this big ray of light coming from his hand outside. This wasn't even the most bizarre thing, because after Jessica went through the wormhole, she landed on this bizarre planet. There on the planet, she would see the astronaut Jim, the same astronaut that died at the beginning of the movie. And he communicates with her telepathically and tells her that everything is going to be okay. Now, Jillian and Alex, hearing this, don't know what to make of it. They think maybe she had a traumatic experience and all of this is a figment of her imagination. But her memory circuits do not lie as she's recorded years of information. But none of this at this point really matter, because the debris and the solar flare that they were afraid of was now approaching Earth's atmosphere. And in a very scary and fantastic manner, the orbs that were all over the Earth's planet cover the atmosphere protecting the planet from the debris. Everyone starts celebrating, because now, humankind has understood that these so-called aliens in the wormhole was not here to attack mankind, but to protect it. And soon after the solar flare and the debris passed by, these giant orbs that were in the atmosphere disappear as well. But in the coming few days, something almost divine happens, as a planet almost completely identical to Earth gets formed in a matter of days. This was a signal to mankind that the aliens want the human species to survive, and protecting the human race was in their best interest. And as our movie comes to a close, we see that after a year or so, human beings start to colonize their new planet. 
And that is how today's movie comes to an end. I hope you guys enjoyed this recap. Make sure to leave a like, leave a comment, subscribe to my channel. I promise to see you guys on my next recap. I love you all. Bye.